and welcome back to GT Canada. Today I'm working on my wife's Mercedes ML 550 again. It has developed a frequent battery draw which leaves the battery discharged if you leave it parked for about a day, about 12 to 16 hours, the battery just seems to die. So what I don't know is, if the, is the battery no good or is there a draw on the engine? So I need to figure out which it is. Now I think that the battery is probably fine. And the reason I think that is because I put a brand new battery in this only one year ago. And it would be really weird for the battery to die after just one year. But I do have a sneaking suspicion that this car has actually had a battery draw since we bought it. We've had it for two years and that I assumed the battery was no good one year ago when it seemed to always be weak after we came out to start it after a day or so. But I think that the battery draw has gotten worse and has depleted this battery and maybe this battery is no good too, but I need to figure that out. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to test for a battery draw and how you can figure it out as well on your car. It does not need to be a Mercedes. These tips will work on any car that has a battery. So check out the process right now. So the first thing you want to do is go to your engine bay and make sure that your battery is charged up all the way. Now I'm just using an inexpensive voltmeter that does volts and amps. It's important that your meter also does amps because we're going to be using that functionality of it as we do this testing. So right now we want to have it on volts. We're testing for 12 volts because this is a 12 volt system. If your vehicle is a 24 volt system, which not a lot exists out there, but there are some older vehicles that are a 24 volt system. So you need to know the voltage. If it's new and you've had it for, you know, it's newer than like the 1960s, it's probably a 12 volt, unless you know specifically it's 24 volts. So put it on 12 volts and test your voltage. You should have at least about 12 and a half volts as I have here. Now it is important to note that on this car, this is a Mercedes and they like to put the battery somewhere else. In my case, the battery is underneath the passenger seat. So I just have terminals at the engine bay where you would be able to jump start the car if your battery was totally dead. So you, it's best to check it right at the battery if you can. We're gonna need to get to the battery anyway, but where my battery is, it's hard to get a positive lead way back in there. I can only get onto the negative lead. So I'm just testing it right here. I do have about 12 and a half volts, so I'm ready to move on to the next step. If you do not have a fully charged battery, you need to get yourself a battery charger charge the battery up all the way and then do the next steps on this test you must have a charged battery to be able to do these tests if the battery is discharged your readings are going to be off and you might end up diagnosing the wrong problem so get yourself a good battery charger if you don't have one you can hook up some jumper cables from another car and just have that vehicle running to charge up your battery but you must have a charged battery before you start this so we're gonna assume that your battery is charged and that you know that, you've tested it, and you're ready to move to the next step. As I said, my battery is under my seat, so I can expose my battery here. Now all I wanna do is remove the negative battery terminal. So that's conveniently located here in your car. If it is not a Mercedes, it'll be easier because it's under your hood, but it's the negative, and you wanna make sure that is definitely the negative that you're disconnecting. But you should just be able to loosen it off like that and then remove it. And that's all we need to do right now is just separate that. You see how that's separated? Just like that. Now we need to hook up our meter. So this is a rat's nest of wires and I understand. So I'll try and put up a graphic so you see what I'm doing. But my meter I have hooked up on the DC 10 amp setting and the black wire is connected to the common. The meter is on DC 10 amps, and currently you can see I'm drawing about 4.44 amps. That is a lot, and it's more than I want. Now the way I accomplished that was I put an alligator clip on the negative battery post, and I connected that to the positive lead coming off of my meter and I put another alligator clamp on the negative battery cable from the car 
and then I connected that up to my negative lead on the meter. This allows me to be able to be hands-free with this. I don't have to hold it. If you wanted, you could put the negative lead from the, from the meter, the negative lead, right onto the battery post, and the positive lead you could put right onto the negative lead that we've pulled off the battery. That's the short way of doing this. By putting these clips on, it allows me to just monitor my current draw right there like that. So once this is set up and you've got your reading, you are ready to move on to the next step. Now the next thing you're going to want to do is remove any draws that you know about. Now I've got all the doors open so I know that all of my interior lights are on. I want to turn those off while I'm doing this test because it will mess up with my results. So I want to know what the car draw is, the amperage is, while it's just sitting here doing nothing. But when I've got the doors open, the car's not doing nothing. It's turning the map lights on and the interior lights on. So I'm going to find if there's a switch or something inside the car. Your car is going to be different, but figure out if there's a cancel switch to turn off the interior lights while you're doing this test. So once you've got that meter hooked up like that, what you need to do is come up to the engine bay and find your fuse box. There's a fuse box here. You need to start just pulling fuses one at a time. So you need to know where all your fuse boxes are. This car has at least two fuse boxes. I think it has three, but we're gonna go to the big ones first and work our way down. Partly because it's easier to get to the one under the hood and the one that's in the back than it is to get to the one that's under the seat. So I'm gonna hope that it's nothing under the seat. Here I am at the main fuse box. It's not gonna be these big fuses and you don't wanna pull those big fuses out. What you wanna be pulling out are just the regular size fuses. That's these guys. Now these are the older style fuses. If you're looking at this on a newer car, you're gonna have a micro fuse, which is about half this size. So if you find one that's this size or half this size, those are the ones you're pulling out. I'm just using regular needle nose pliers because I don't have the tool. And all you're gonna do is pull it out like that and then have the person watching the meter holler out if it went down or up or didn't change. So it didn't change, so we're going to stick it back in, make sure it's tight and then move on to the next one. And again, we just pull it out just like that, check if it changed and stick it back in. You want to make sure that you stick it in tight I want to take a minute here to give you two cautions. Number one, make sure that if your car has a radio that has a code, that you know the code for your radio. Some radios will let, will let you extract that code before the battery goes flat, some will not. If it does not, check inside your glove box, sometimes there's a sticker in there that has a radio code, or check your owner's manual, usually on the first page or the last page or the page uh, that talks about the radio, somebody somewhere will have written down the radio code. If your car does not use a radio code, that's fine, don't worry about it. This car just syncs the radio to the computer, so every time it powers back up, it syncs automatically, there's no code required. Number two, when you are pulling fuses out, you wanna make sure that the fuse is all the way back in, or you will create a new problem for yourself. So you're gonna take one fuse at a time, put it back one at a time, push it in, and then you take the next fuse out. Do not move on to the do not move on to the next fuse until the first fuse is back where it came from. This way you won't get confused about where the fuses are and you can make sure it's in tightly before you move on. Then you move on. And all you're doing is just going through each fuse one at a time until you see that current drop drop or the current draw drop. When it drops, figure out what that fuse is for and investigate that circuit. Usually there'll be a faulty component or something on that circuit that is causing the problem. So that should get you safely through figuring out where a current draw is on your car. I hope this helped you out. If you appreciate what we're doing, I encourage you to subscribe down below and hit the bell so that you can watch all of our other videos as they drop. Until they do though, you can check out some of the videos right here. There are a lot of great videos in our back library that I'd like for you to check out as well. There's some good stuff there. I think you'll appreciate it. But until next time, have a great day.